In addition to built-in functions and functions that you can access from packages, you can also write your own functions. The general structure of a function is like this. You give the function a name. This is just like any other object name. And then you use the function function. Now after the function function, you can open and close curly brackets. Arguments that you want to use in your function go in here. So here we've created now a function called function name. It takes an argument, my arg, it does nothing. We could try running our new function and look, it does nothing. So let's try a different kind of function, something that actually has a result. Let's call it add one. And the function is going to take one argument called my number. Now, usually you have several lines of code in here. So you put curly brackets at the start, skip some lines and one at the end. Our function is going to take my number, whatever value that is, and add one. Okay, so let's try add one to the number 10. All right, I made this error on purpose. It's a kind of opaque error, but what it really means is that you haven't defined your function yet. So here in the environment tab, we have a function called function name, which we defined before, but the function isn't defined until you run this statement. You need to define add one as the result of the function function. So let's run that. And now add one is a function. We can click on it and see the text of the function. And now we can also use the function. So if we add one to 10, this returns the number 11. Let's make a more interesting function, say one that reports p-values in APA format. So first, let's think of a name for this function. You can name it really anything you want, but try not to duplicate existing functions or you'll overwrite them. So if you called your function rep, um, then when you wanted to use the base r function rep, you would need to preface it with base and two colons. So you can have more than one function in different packages that have the same name, but then you have to refer to them with their package name. So let's call our new function report p. And we'll just set up an empty function statement and run that. Okay, so report p is now in our environment. And let's think about what kind of arguments we need to add. So the first argument is the p-value. What's the p-value that we want to report in APA style? Let's call that argument p. Another thing that we might want to be able to tell this function is how many digits we want to round our p-values to. We can give arguments a default. So here, if you don't specify how many digits you want, we'll default assume it's three. There's no real default for a p-value. Somebody really doesn't have any need for this function if they don't input a p-value. So we don't give a default to arguments that don't have a sensible default. Okay, now we need to write some code in the function to process the input arguments and turn them into a returned output. So we can set up an if then statement and check the statement. If P is less than 0 0.001, we want to do one particular thing. Else, we want to do a different thing. So this if else construction, if and then inside of parentheses, we put a statement that can evaluate to true or false 
If it's true, then the code inside of these curly brackets will run. Else, the code inside these curly brackets will run. So if the p is less than 0 0.001, let's set um, an object called reported to the string p less than 0 0.001, which is our APA style. Otherwise, what we want to do is round the p-value to the correct number of digits and then report that. So let's make an object called round p and set that to the result of the round function. The round function takes a number and a number of digits. So we'll use p from our function. Any of the arguments that are defined up here are available inside of your code as those values. So we'll round the value of p to the number of digits, which is a default of 3, but can be whatever a person set it to. We'll round that. And then we'll set reported equal now to the result of the paste function. The paste function just pastes together strings. Let's use the paste 0 function, which now we've set the now we've set the object reported to what we want the result to be. But the last thing we need to do inside of a function is print the object or return the object. So we'll put that at the end. Remember we need to run report p so that the function itself is updated. We can click on that and see what does the function look like. A common problem when you're creating functions is that you edit the text of the function, forget to redefine your function object, and then when you try to use it, the old unedited function is actually what's being called here. So let's try to use this. Report p, let's try a p-value of point 0.024567. Okay, that returns p equals 0 0.025. Let's try it with four digits. Now remember we can set digits equals four, p equals 0 0.024567. You can put the arguments in any order if you name them, but it's usually confusing and easier to just have them in the order that they are in the function. How about a p-value that's smaller than 0 0.001? Let's test that out. Great. In the next section, we'll talk a bit about what happens if you try to put in a letter for the p-value. How do we write warnings and errors for our functions to make sure that they're a bit more foolproof?